Hi guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be makeup mistakes, tips to avoid them, and why I think the way I think, because I want to explain to you why this is worse than this side. Um, but I have done one of these videos before, it was a lot of fun. Uh, many of these tips were in that first video, but I've upped it a notch as I've learned more about contouring and highlighting and accentuating your best features and minimizing the worst, um, in your opinion, the worst features. I think that um, I should be able to help a lot of people with this video, so that's why I made a goofball of myself. Thanks for watching. For the first thing I want to mention is bronzer, contour or bronzer. So, as you can see on this side, I have brought my bronzer at the right angle all the way into the mouth. Do you see how it looks like I have something going on over there? Now obviously I'm very heavy handed on this side, but it's to demonstrate a point. So first of all, this bronzer color that I used over here is very warm. Now that's okay, warm, warm tone bronzers are fine, but your contour shade should be more of a cool tone color to, to resemble a shadow, like a grayish or a cool brown. So this one is a bronzer used as a contour. That's a no-no. On this side of my face, my contour is very subtle, first of all, but it stops at the outer part of the eye. It doesn't go in any further than this so that I don't look like I have a beard. Um, also, I'm heavy-handed with the blush hair. Now I just want to show that my blush is actually a very, very blue-toned pink, which is fine, I mean, if that's your thing. Um, crazy blue toned. I mean, this isn't even doing it justice. Let's remedy that. Now? I don't know. You're just not seeing it. Okay, well, anyway, this is like neon pink in person. So, my point is that you can wear whatever colors you want. I happen to be warm toned, so warmer blushes do look better on me, or maybe neutral. Blue tone pink, maybe not so much, but I was able to wear that blue tone pink on the, we'll say this is the, the correct side, okay? This has the boo-boos, this is the correct. Um, I can wear that same color blush, but in a more natural way. And if you notice, the positioning of the blush on this side is I have blush from here and out. I don't have anything on the inside part of the face. And that is because when I smile over here, um, I'm going to make this even more obvious. Oh, that's the good side. Oh no, what did I just do? Okay. When I smile, my blush sags as I drop. We don't want that. Especially as you get older, your skin gets a little bit more saggy. So you want your blush on the part of your face that's not going to move when you move your face as much, which is back here. So I still look glowing. I still look like I have blush. I still have color in my cheeks. I look a little flushed when, in a good way, but a natural or way to do it. And I also, I just carried that blush in too far towards the nose. Also, for highlighter, I used the same highlighter. This is the Mary Luminizer um, by The Balm. And that blush was, for reference, Stila's Custom Color Blush in Self-Adjusting Pink. Um, so I used the same highlighter on both sides. The difference is, on the incorrect side, I took that highlighter, first of all, really heavy-handed. I used a brush that was stiff, a stiff tone, domed brush and I packed that in all the way to the inner corner uh, to the nose so I really went all the way what that's doing in person I'm not sure if you can see it but it's accentuating those um, pores that are right around my nose where I have bigger pores it really brings this area out and not in a good way this side of my face however rather than using a stiff brush I used a fan brush which is going to give you a more natural application and I used the same color, but I was able to just stop it right about the middle of the eye and so that this part of the, the face doesn't have any shimmer. You don't want shimmer where you have the biggest pores, and most people that's around the nose area. That's another thing. Okay, so my under eye concealer today, I used the same one on both eyes. But to set it on um, the good side, I did, you know, just a light dusting of a light slightly yellow based powder. Um, white or slightly yellow based is fine. But on the bad side, I actually um, used a white, pure white. So if you can tell, I look very white up there as opposed to the other side. And that is because um, white is a blue tone shade. Or a 
you know, can be a cooler tone shade. So you want to get a warm white slash yellow, like a vanilla color maybe. You definitely want to have some form of yellow. Now if you're super fair, don't, don't, cry, don't go with banana powder, okay? But something in between white and yellow would be fine. Um, and try it out. What do you got to lose, you know, one day when you're not going anywhere? Maybe before bed, you know, give it a shot. But on this side, I used a slightly yellow base. So my under eye circles actually look a lot better on this side in person. Um, and this either kind of like my bags are coming out and everything. Okay, so for lips, I use the same lip liner on each side. This side of my lip has not been exfoliated. And it really shows. I used a sub extremely lighter lip color than the liner which doesn't look flattering um, and also I overdrew my lips a ridiculous amount so that's crazy to me I would never do that and I also overdrew the lips all the way out to the outer corner if you're going to overdraw your lips as I did on this side um, I didn't overdraw it at the corners I only overdrew it a little bit here and a little bit here also um, you want to use a color for your lipstick to fill in um, about the same color as your lip liner, maybe a shade lighter, that's fine. Nobody will notice. Okay, so exfoliate your lips. Choose a lip liner that matches your lipstick a little bit closer than this color combo here. Don't overdraw so much that it becomes, looks like you got lip injections overnight. You know, you can overdraw a little, but you don't have to go cray cray. Um, also for your brows, I used the same brow products on each eye. Do you notice though how this brow just looks kind of nice it looks filled in and polished but it doesn't look crazy this eyebrow I carried it down a little too far so I'm going to show you the pencil trick um, this is my brow whiz but it will just say it's a pencil for now um, so your brow should end where your where your outer part of your nose sorry I'm stuttering here outer part of your nose hits the outer part the inner part of your eye and goes straight up so that is where you want your brow to end okay and then you want to take from your outer corner of your nose to the center of your pupil and that should be where your arch hits there you go now you take the outer corner of the nose to the outer corner of the eye and that's where your brow should end now watch here do you see how my brow on this side is way longer outer corner of the nose to outer corner of the eye that's where your brow should end so my nose on on this side is telling me, oh boy, that brow is way too long, girlfriend. You need to trim that up. On this side, however, um, it's perfect. So that's how I keep my brows daily. Sorry, I'm kind of cheating there. There we go. Um, anyway, so my point is, this side looks overdone. Also, I used the same color throughout the entire brow on this side. On this side, I used two different shades. I used a darker shade from about the arch are right here and out but I used a lighter shade on the inner corner to give a more natural appearance to the start of the brow so it doesn't look so made up and I did not accentuate the top of the brow line at all only the underside I just kinda made sure it had a lift and looked filled in on this side however I really accentuated you see the top of this brow how it is like super duper drawn in right there and also the front of the brow is done with the same color with a heavy hand so it looks very harsh and drawn in whereas this side it kind of naturally fades that's another tip um, so you want to use a lighter hand don't fill in the upper side use two different colors the darkest color on the outer part of the eyebrow and the inner part should be a little lighter um, you want to brush through it make sure it looks very even and natural okay so for eyes today I used the same two eyeshadow colors or three I guess um, I used a neutral tan color, a darker brown, and then like a white for a highlight, and some mascara and eyeliner. I used both the same products on both eyes, but I just want to show you that um, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. If you hear outside noise, sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it. So on this eye, I have, well, I'll do the, the bad eye first. I have a, the tan color and I have a dark brown in the crease and a little bit of white under the brow. I have a black eyeliner drawn thickly, the same thickness all the way to the inner corner and I have stopped the line right at the outer part of the eye um, I applied some mascara but you see that that line is so thick that I am losing my eyelashes where are my eyelashes oh I can't see them 
Also, on the under eye, the eyeliner, I did a thick line, and I carried it all the way in. So the effect that that has on my eye is this. It's heavy, it's weighting my eye down like this. It's just really accentuating the drop, the drop in gravity in my eye. We get enough of that as we get older, you don't wanna do that on your own on purpose. So what I did here also is I put the, the color in the crease, the dark brown, and I didn't take it above the crease. So my eye looks extremely hooded, it looks really saggy and small. This is really making my eye look a lot smaller. Now see on the other side, I did the liner on the, the top lash line and I extended it just a tad past the actual end of my lash line and I don't care if you do a wing, I mean that part is optional, go for it girl. If you got, if you got the mad eyeliner wing skills, you do it. But if you're not into wings, I mean do you see how it's thickest on the outer part of the eye, it went just exceeded just a little past the eyelash line. And it continues all the way to the inner eye, but it gets really thin, almost non-existent on the inner part of the eye. So I was able to make the eye look lifted and up with the shape of that eyeliner. Also, look at that. My lashes are there and present and visible, whereas on this side they kind of get lost. This entire eye looks more lifted because I did a nice highlight under the brow bone. And I'll have you notice, this color I put the crease color, this eye I put the crease color in the crease and that's it. On this eye I put the crease color in the crease and above. Do you see how that darker color carries way above the crease? So that my eye actually looks less saggy. This eye looks droopy and this eye looks more um, awake and lifted and younger. Also notice the under eye area, I did that liner all the way into the inner corner. On this eye, I just did it on the outer half of the eye. And now, look at that, you can see my lower lashes, whereas this eye, the lower lashes kind of disappear. So, the moral of the story here is don't go crazy with the makeup, guys. I mean, you can, like I use the same amount of products, the same number of brushes, everything on this side of my face, but I look more youthful, and modern and refreshed, I guess you could say. And this side of my face looks crazy. Now, yes, I did go with a heavier hand, but the that was to make a point. I know that I wouldn't normally wear this much blush, you know, like that, but I wanted to show that when my cheek drops, my blush like sinks down a little bit. So you don't want to do that. Um, I also wanted to point out my nose contouring really quick before I end this video. So on the bad side, it's kind of hard to see. On the bad side, I'm looking in my mirror. I, um, I took the nose contouring like all here. I'm sorry, you're really not able to see it. Let me change up the lighting a little bit again. Um, I took that nose contouring like way intense over here. And I put a dollop of like a white shimmery powder right on the tip of the nose. Do you see how, I'll do it, I'll over exaggerate it for you now because I feel like you can't tell. Do you see how this makes me look like Rudolph? Like I have, it looks like to me, like I need to go and powder my nose like right now because my nose is shining like a disco ball. It makes you look oily. So if you're already oily, this is really accentuating how bulbous my nose is. You don't want to do that unless you have a really tiny skinny nose and you're wanting to draw attention to it. Also, I wanted to point out, if you have a short chin, you do not want to be putting contour around your jawline and taking it up on the chin. If you have a long chin, you don't want to be putting a bunch of highlight there because what that does, I'm going to wash all this off right now so don't don't mind me, but what that does when you put highlight there is it, it accentuates this spot on your face and that would be fine but I have a long chin but if you have a short chin you don't want to put dark color there because that will make your chin look even shorter. The, the basics of contouring and, print, um, and highlighting principle is you want this part of your face, the heart, this heart here to be lighter than the other part of your face. And that all sounds great, except that there are different face shapes out there. So you should probably look up some videos on contouring and highlighting if that doesn't make sense to you because I think it's a really important way on how to bring out the best features in your face. When you are doing your highlighting for your cupid's bow, I would like to keep you to keep in mind that 
you want to put a little bit of highlight right here, right at the cupid's bow, right there, which is going to bring accentuation to the curvature of your lip, which is great. Except the fact that if you take that highlight all the way over on the top of this upper lip, what you're doing is if you have even a hint of a mustache, which I do, but it's subtle. If you have even a hint of a mustache, girl, you just put a white base underneath those dark hairs. Now your dark hairs look even brighter, even darker, and they stand out even more. So unless you wax that and you have a perfectly smooth upper lip, you don't even have that like peach fuzz like I do, you don't want to be putting white all around this area. I do agree that if you get red at the corners of your mouth, you can definitely do a dot there, dot there, dot there, you're good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think that this is really fun to like do as a demo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.